If you're looking for a no treat style of dog training, you, you really you don't want to rely on treats. You know that they're not always available to be used. You, you, you're the kind of person who wants your dog to obey all the time, not just when food is there, because you can see the difference of how much more drive your dog has to work for you when you have a treat pouch on or you're holding food or there's you know food nearby. And I want to let you know that I hear you and I can help you. But before I do, uh, I need to kind of let you know that you are running some risks and you're making a decision. You're at a fork in the road when you're looking for a style of training that is no treat specific. And I just want to make sure that you know what you're going down. So essentially, there are two types of do uh, dog training styles. There is the treat method and there is the no, the no treat method. And maybe you could also call these the positive method and the negative method. So, uh, and they're the same. The negative method it correlates, correlates with the no treat method. It's relying on punishment uh, and, and pain and shock collars and pinching and, and uh, those sorts of things and, or, or forcing. And the positive side relies on treats and all those sorts of things. Now, I'm not trying to sell you, uh, you know, uh, on, on it being all fluffy bunnies and rainbows and unicorns running around here. So I'm not, I'm just after what works best for you. I don't care if one's inhumane or not for the purposes of this video. I'm not trying to go there. Uh, I just want the best dog for you. And so let, I want to just give you a quick little example of what happens when you pick the no treat style of dog training. And then I'm not, I, what I want to show you is, is how to turn treats into a gateway drug, so to speak, to the non-treat uh, to eventually not need a treat. Because I don't want to always have to have treats. Uh, I want to use treats as a gateway drug to uh, allow my dog to not need them anymore. And that way he gets some benefits that I'll talk about. So the thing that happens uh, that, that is a law in animal training when you're deciding whether to go with a no treat method or a treat method is that there is also something that people don't think about. They, the behavior is obviously there. And what happens with the no treat method, uh, you're using punishment and pun, uh, you know those sorts of things, and you get behavior fixes very quickly, a little bit quicker than using the treat method because there's got to be cognitive learning going on. Learning is harder than just reacting to things that hurt you. Uh, the fastest way to teach a kid to touch a stove is definitely by letting him touch the stove, hot stove once and he won't do it again. Real fast, real instant technique that works real good for getting a kid to not touch a stove. Sitting him down and drawing a picture, talking about how bad it's going to hurt and all that kind of stuff takes way longer. Uh, and, and sometimes maybe you just need to touch the stove and, and, and learn the lesson. But the point being that I want to uh, drive home here as you make this decision with a no treat style dog training or a treat style of dog training is that there's another unintended consequence and that unintended consequence is that you will be training emotions as well. And an example that I like to give people is when you teach a dog to, to do the drop it. Okay, so what happens in, uh, with the no the, the no treat style of drop it training, what you will do is you, your dog has something in its mouth and you reach under its belly behind its hind leg and there's a tender little spot and that little, you know, where there's no skin and you pinch. At the same time you say drop it. The dog feels this pain in its belly, reach, opens its mouth to go kind of attack the pain uh, or at least address it and willing to do so a little violently with its teeth. Uh, and, you know, if you do it right and you get your timing right, you don't do it hard enough so you do, do violent, but you're playing this game and you then pet your dog and say good and everything like that when the dog drops it. And it's very effective, very effective method for teaching your dog to drop it faster than the treat method. However, uh, I'm not going to teach you how to do the treat method uh, r right now. It, it's, uh, I, I have other videos that teach that. I've got videos on how to use uh, the prey drive method to, to teach uh, drop it in combination with doing a, a retrieve and those different sorts of things. You can use uh, treats uh, to, to do it, but uh, w w the point that I want to make is that I live in a household where I have three children uh, ages five and under, and so what happens when my one-year-old comes over to my dog, let's say that I have trained with this pinch method, and reaches her hand up behind the hind legs in that same spot, do you think a dog that's been repeatedly trained that's going to get pinched there every time that it, it you know it, that a hand goes in there is going to have po more positive or more negative emotions when hands go to touch those places 
that we have conditioned them uh, are places that we will inflict pain upon them. And I, I think you would understand that, that, that the dog's going to understand that there's pain. And the, di- the other difference, so it works, it works, but you, you have these unintended consequences of dogs wanting to then possibly be violent, and especially in an environment where there's small children, I don't know that that's the road you want to go down. The other thing that happens, I like to call this the Catholic schoolgirl uh, example, is that, uh, you know, there's this, I don't know, myth. It's probably not really a myth. Uh, there's this, this, you know, joke that goes around about the Catholic schoolgirl, how did this nice, sweet Catholic schoolgirl dressed in her uniform and, uh, you know, sweet and everything, and then, you know, binge-drinking alcoholic as soon as they leave mommy and daddy's care because... Uh, what has happened in uh, traditionally is there's been too many rules in a strict Catholic setting, and there hasn't been any freedom. It's been punishment. It's been not allowed to express. It's just been confined, and the child has learned how to look good when others are around, and when they aren't around, it all falls apart, and that is what dogs do. What what you have to realize when you pick a no treat method is you're training behavior. You're not training. The, you're not doing. You're doing a good job of behavior, but you're not doing a good job of training the emotions. And you train dogs to suppress their emotions. So if a dog growls at, at somebody, you, there's there's punishment methods to get the dog to stop growling, or you will hurt it. And it quickly learns this, and it will will be effective for stopping the growling. But all it does is it teaches them to put that inward. It doesn't get rid of the emotion, and that emotion now is more likely to come out later in an environment that now isn't going to give you a warning. So you won't get a warning when your dog snaps in the future, and that's the risk that you run. So that's enough about why I I really don't like to go down the no-treat method. However, I totally respect your desire to not want to have all the, to have to rely on treats. So I want to give you an example of how to use treats as a gateway drug uh, so that you can use them for a short period of time, get off them, and use other things. And the example I'd like to give you is in a class I'm actually currently, as I'm recording this, we're actually in the middle of an eight-week uh, online class that it's sold out, but it's going really well. It's very fun with all the people in the class, very interactive, getting a lot of people actually doing each week's lessons. And uh, one of the things that we're teaching people is at the end of the class is to have a dog who will heal off leash. So this is like when you are, you know, walking on a in a state park trail and another, you know, a horse rider comes up, for example, or another guy with his pack of dogs comes up. Uh, the dog will automatically see those other dogs and a horse will go f- get into heel position, stand right by your side as they walk by, and then you can release him uh, verbally. There's no leash involved as that. Uh, distraction passes to go back and you know kind of wander ahead of you a little bit and now okay so that method won't won't you will not need to have treats there however how the behavior works in the beginning just to give you like a real quick example is you have to train your dog to make eye contact with you okay I'm not I'll, I'll give you the quick example you have to train your dog to look you in the eye and because this is difficult for dogs, especially because it's not an instinctual thing for dogs, it's kind of a threatening behavior sometimes. You teach your dog to look you in the eye and you give it a treat every time it looks you in the eye. You start rewarding it for treating you for one second, then five seconds and 10 seconds. And then you take it outside and, and, and the treat process is, is several weeks of using treats to slowly condition your dog to, to look you in the, in the eyes by being in the right position. And then if it's not a position to look you in the eyes as it gets into position and using treats the whole way but halfway, maybe not halfway, you know, uh, yeah, I guess it's halfway through the process, you actually start to introduce something else for your dog, and that is a, a jackpot reward because dogs actually will work harder for, uh, uh, for toys, for play, than they will for treats very often. And so we show you in this class how to transition your dog off of the treats, get them onto this drive to play with toys, and then what can happen is all you have to do while you're out is just take like a tennis ball with you. If you're out in a state park and, you know, once every half hour you got to throw this thing, well, who doesn't take a ball with them, you know, to play with their dog, right? That's the purpose of having a dog is to enjoy them. And so you still have to take something with you. It's still a treat. It's just not an edible treat. And uh, and so the dog has learned that if it completes the walk really well in the end, uh, that you will give it this wonderful play session at the end. And that's what it's working on this whole walk 
four. The the and, and again, you end up with a dog who's very excited every time something new comes into its environment. It runs back into heel position. Maybe at, you know, depending on how good you've done this, your dog will do it automatically. If you're not quite to that stage, you'll have to actually give the the word heel, and he'll run into position. Uh, either way, there's no leash involved. Your dog's excited about it because he knows, oh boy, after this horse comes by, my mom, my dad is gonna throw that ball for me again, and woohoo! And and the dog is excited to be in heel position, not tails pinned uh, or, or ears pinned, tail tucked as the threat walks by because he knows daddy's going to beat me. You know, I've seen they actually take these, these, these chain coils and you actually throw it at your dog's backside um, if it's not in position is the other way to do that. Well, you tell me. What ends up with a happier dog? Um, you know, I guess you could have a shot collar and you could zap your dog every time he got out of position. I Just be aware of the unintended consequences of that kind of thing. And please be aware that there's ways to use treats as gateway drugs. They are not having to be there for the whole, uh, you know, through the end. You need them in the process, absolutely. Uh, but, but when you actually go out into the real world, you don't necessarily need them anymore uh, most of the time. And so, anyways, hey. If this has been interesting for you, <laughs> well, you probably would. If it hasn't been, you probably would have left by now. But if it has, I'd like to offer you the chance to learn more about the way I like to think about dog training and apply it to your life. And that is via a free class that I offer uh, every week. It is at freedogclass.com. It's a webinar. It's an online webinar, a more interactive format where we go over lots of different motivators. You know, I talked about using the toys. That's a motivator called Prey Drive. Uh, treats is a motivator called food drive. Well, there's like about 30 more of these things, and we talk about a lot of them on the class, and I think that it would be uh, interesting for you to, to join us for on our next class, and you can go to freedogclass.com if you're interested in learning more about it.